Hello, welcome to another episode of Curries and Stories with me, Milam. Today, I'm not going down the same route. I'm going to make you the easiest chocolate cake ever. There are one, two, three, four, five ingredients. The fifth ingredient is optional. Let's start with a delicious, flourless, yes, you heard me, it's flourless chocolate cake. It does contain eggs though. Right, let's crack on. I'm going to make a bain marie. That basically is a pan of water simmering with another glass bowl put on top, but make sure the bottom does not touch the water. I have here 150 grams of butter. You need to be exact when you're baking. 300 grams of really good, the best quality dark chocolate that you can get. Pop that in there. Now it's just a waiting game. Place that on the top. Let that start melting. While that's melting, I'm gonna move on to my egg yolks and the sugar. I have five egg yolks here, separated. Pop those in. And 50 grams of caster sugar. In it goes. Turn on the engine. Right. My eggs and cast sugar have been whisked. Now what you want, you want them to become light and fluffy. Because remember, there is no flour, there's no baking agent or rising agent in the cake. I'm going to whisk my five egg whites. Here we go. So, these are done. You need to whisk them till they form stiff peaks and they shouldn't fall on your head. Oh, marvellous, great. So I'm going to turn off my hob. My chocolate has melted. Marvellous. Right, it's an assembly job now. My melted chocolate and butter is going to go into my whisked egg yolks and caster sugar. Pour gently. And as you pour, fold it in. Don't go mad by overbeating. Otherwise, you will knock out all the air. And remember, it's the air that's going to give rise to our cake. Pouring, fold, fold, and just get it all in. Right, we have the egg whites. Add them in a little bit at a time. So the first one that you add, just incorporate it in. You can be a little bit rough at this point. Once you've got that one bit almost in, then you fold in the rest. Right, so you can see that the egg whites have almost been incorporated in there. I have some ground almonds. This is an optional extra. This is about 140 grams. I'm going to sprinkle them in. It just gives it a nice sort of, uh, you know, crunch. It is an optional extra. I just like it because it adds a little bit more body. Here we go. Again, fold them in. This looks so good. I could quite easily, as all my friends know, put my face in this. But really, I think that's a Christmas party trick that I do. Once I've had one or three Horton brandies. Anyway, right, that's, see, it's lovely and light. Uh, you can see that I've stirred it quite a bit, but the air is still in there. It feels lighter to the touch also. There are a few air bubbles, which means it's going to be nice and light. My mixture is ready to pour into my tin, which I've already greased and lined with the greaseproof paper. I'm going to be very lucky licking this bowl after. Pour it into your tin. Be gentle. Remember, you want to keep all the air in there. 
Right, my cake's ready to go into my oven, which I preheated at 230 degrees. Um, but what I would suggest is whack your oven up to the highest temperature it can go before the cake goes in. Cake goes in, turn it down to 200, 220, depending on how hot your oven goes. Because I know that back home, our ovens get very hot at 180. Um, so just, you know your oven, you know how hot it gets. Common sense dictates. Right, the cake's gonna remain in the oven for about 25 minutes or until a skewer comes out clean. And then let it cool and enjoy. But in the meantime, I have a bowl of chocolate mix with my name on it. Mm. Mm. Right, let's take out this beautiful cake. Isn't it magnificent? Oh yes, now let's just insert a skewer. As you can see, the skewers come out clean. This cake benefits from sitting for a little while because it's, the consistency of it is almost like a fudgy mousse. You need to let this cool down completely before you take it out of the tip. Let that cool down. Cake has cooled down, it's come to room temperature. So now it's the moment of truth. Oh! Oh! Oh yeah, baby! Check that out! Now to turn it. Wish me luck, people! Oh dear. Right, let's peel away that greaseproof paper. It smells delicious. Got a bit of cocoa powder. Give it a light dusting, just to make it pretty. Oh yes, that's gonna be superb. Now this cake does benefit from cooking the night before or the day before, leaving it in the fridge because it just becomes even more gooey in texture. It's like a big brownie. Right, there you have it. My flourless chocolate cake would be really tasty with some double whipped cream or even some nice vanilla ice cream. I look forward to seeing you again on the next episode of Curries and Stories. But right now, I'm going to cut this, have a slice and enjoy. See you next week. <laughs>